day. In this lesson, we will investigate constant velocity and how we can use graphs of motion to understand the concept better. Let us join Nelly as she introduces the concept of constant velocity to us. To begin with, let's make sure we all understand what velocity is. It is a measure of how much an object changes its position in a given time. When we talk about how much something changes in a given time, we are talking about its rate of change. Velocity is the rate of change in position of a moving object. We find velocity by using the equation velocity equals the change in position divided by time. We always state velocity using the SI unit, meters per second, and the direction of movement. In this lesson, we'll be focusing on objects whose velocity does not change while they are moving. In other words, their velocity is constant. We are going to take some measurements to see what it means to move at a constant velocity. One way of doing this is using a trolley and a plastic syringe. Now let's join Aaron in the lab to see how it's done. Hello there guys, it's great to see you again. You know what, check out this experiment that I've set up here. I've got this dynamic trolley which is going to travel along this track here. Now this track has been set up in such a way that our trolley is going to travel at constant velocity on the track. To determine velocity, we need to measure the position of the trolley on the track at regular time intervals while it's in motion. Now one way of doing that, we need to attach a syringe filled with ink onto the trolley and adjust the syringe in such a way that it's going to release one drop of ink on the track every second. The trolley runs on the track dropping ink to mark its position each second. Can you see the ink spots the syringe released as the trolley moves forward? Now each gap between the sports represents the change in position or displacement of the trolley in one second. Now we use a ruler to measure the trolley's position at the end of each time interval. So let's start here. This ink spot here was dropped at time t equals zero. That is the time at which we will start analyzing the movement of the trolley. We mark the middle of the first spot with a line as well as the next four because we're going to measure the change in position. It's important to record the results. So here's a table to display them in such a way that it's going to make it easy for us to analyze them. Time is in seconds. Change in position is in meters. Now we want to also calculate the position at the end of each interval. We've added a third column here and we're going to calculate the results for four seconds. Well, there you have it. Aaron has shown us how to perform the experiment and tabulate the results we need. Now let's join Nelly to analyze these results. Let's have a look at these results. The trolley moved from 0, 0,2 meters to 0, 0,45 meters in the first second. So, its change in position is 0, 0,25 meters. It moved from 0, 0,45 meters to 0, 0,7 meters in the next second. Its change in position is 0, 0,25 meters. What do you notice about the change in position or displacement in all of these time intervals? Clearly, it's the same. Nelly has shown us that the motion of the trolley in this experiment is constant since the change in position per unit time is constant. Now let's see how Nelly translates these results into a graph. A useful way to represent the data about the trolley's movement is to plot the graph of position against time using the data in the table. Can you predict the shape of this graph? <laughs> let's have a look. Time is the independent variable, so we place it along the horizontal axis. And position goes on the vertical axis. The time is measured in seconds, and the position is measured in meters. 
the trolley moved forwards from 0 0.2 meters to 1.2 meters. I have seven blocks on the position axis, so I choose a scale to fit in all the readings. Here, each large block represents 0 0.2 meters. I will use two blocks to represent each second on the time axis. At the start, time equals zero seconds. The trolley is in its original position of 0 0.2 meters. Therefore, I can mark the position of the trolley here on the position axis. After one second, the trolley moved forwards by 0 0.25 meters, so I can plot its position at one second and 0 0.45 meters on the graph. At two seconds, the trolley is at 0 0.7 meters. At three seconds, the position of the trolley is 0 0.9 meters. And at four seconds, 1.2 meters. Is this what you expected for the trolley moving with constant velocity? I hope so. In fact, when anything moves with constant velocity, the position time graph will be a straight line. So, whenever the position time graph is a straight line, you can conclude that the velocity of the moving object was constant. So now we know how to record our results using a graph, and we have learned that the displacement versus the time graph for constant velocity is a straight line. Back to Nelly to see what else we can learn from this graph. Let's take a closer look at this straight line as its gradient or slope gives us other useful information. Remember, from the work you have done in maths, that we calculate the gradient for any straight line by using the formula gradient equals change in y divided by change in x. For our position time graph, the change in y is the change in position and the change in x is the change in time. So, we can write the equation for the gradient of this graph as gradient equals the change in position divided by the change in time. We can use the symbol delta to represent change in. Now we need to find values to substitute into the equation. Let's have a look at the graph. Because the gradient is constant, I could calculate the gradient for any small time interval or for the whole time and always find the same answer. Let's use the value for the whole time in our calculation. The trolley changed position from 0, 0,2 meters to 1,2 meters. The change in position was 1 meter. The change in time was 4 seconds. This gives an answer of 0, 0,25 meters per second. Nelly has shown us how to use the gradient of a displacement versus time graph to calculate the magnitude of the constant velocity. Let us see how this compares with our original readings on the table. Can you calculate the velocity of the trolley for each of the four time intervals? The trolley changed position by 0, 0.25 meters every second, so its velocity is 0, 0.25 meters per second forwards for all the time intervals. Now we know that the gradient of a displacement versus change in time graph gives us the magnitude of the constant velocity. Let us join Nelly as she summarizes what we have learned so far and introduces a new graph to us. This is very important to remember. The gradient or slope of a position time graph is equal to the velocity of the moving object for the time interval used. Can you see that we use a position time graph to find two important pieces of information? Firstly, if the graph is a straight line, we know that the velocity of the moving object was constant. Secondly, we can calculate the value of velocity of the moving object by calculating the gradient of the line. Now, let's look at another useful graph, the velocity time graph. 
what do you think the velocity time graph for the trolley will look like? Compare your graph to mine. I've drawn the velocity on the vertical axis and the time on the horizontal axis. The velocity remains constant at 0 0.25 meters per second. So, the velocity time graph is a straight line graph parallel to the horizontal axis. Let's look at this graph showing constant velocity. Can you see that the velocity at every small time interval or instant is the same for the total time shown? We call the velocity at a particular instant the instantaneous velocity. The graph shows us that when the velocity of a moving object is constant, the average velocity will be the same as its instantaneous velocity. Now, to get a more accurate set of readings, have a look at this very useful device. This is a data logger called the Explorer. It is attached to a position sensor and a computer. When the Explorer is turned on, the sensor measures a body's position over a period of time. A graph of position against time can be plotted automatically. Let's see how this happens. Watch as Dinewa walks in a straight line away from the sensor and have a careful look what is recorded by the computer. The position sensor picked up the fact that Dinewa is moving away slowly. The position time graph is almost a straight line graph with a constant slope. Let's look at Dinewa again. This time she is moving a little faster. Her change in position is greater than before. The graphs that were generated by the explorer show detailed changes in position. Lots of readings were taken, and so we have a more accurate picture of small changes in position. Dinewa was trying to maintain a constant velocity, but the graph shows that this was not always possible. Let's compare the graphs. The first graph shows us the result of Dinewa walking away from the position sensor at a slower pace than the second one. What do you notice about these two graphs? First, let's discuss their shapes. They both have similar shapes. Apart from small deviations, they are straight line graphs. This means they both have constant slopes or gradients. But the steepness of their slopes differs. Notice that the slope of the graph is steeper when she walks faster. Have a careful look at the slope of the position time graph when Dinewa was walking slowly. After two seconds, Dinewa had changed her position by 1,3 meters. This is a small change of position in the given time. Her average velocity for these two seconds is 1,3 divided by 2, which equals 0 0,65 meters per second forwards. When she walked faster, her position after two seconds had changed by 2,8 meters. This is a greater change in position in the same time. Her average velocity must be greater and in fact is 1,4 meters per second. Can you see the steepness of the slope is directly related to the average velocity? The greater the average velocity, the steeper the slope of the graph. We now know that the gradient of a displacement time graph is a measure of the velocity. Let's use the velocity versus time graph to calculate the displacement at a point. We know that velocity equals change in displacement divided by change in time. We can rearrange this equation to make the change in displacement the subject of the formula. So we can say that change in displacement equals the velocity multiplied by the change in time. Here is the velocity versus time graph that Nelly drew. 
Remember that we have just said that we can get displacement by multiplying the velocity by the change in time. If we use this equation, we see that if we multiply the velocity of 0.25 meters per second by the time at one second, we get a displacement of 0.25. When we look at the data table, we can see that this matches what we originally measured. The change in displacement during the first second is equal to 0.45 meters minus 0.2 meters which equals 0.25 meters. Now let's look at the velocity versus time graph again and check if this matches for two seconds. Again, using our equation, we see that the displacement after two seconds equals two multiplied by 0.25 meters per second, which equals 0.5 meters. When we multiply the velocity by time, we are actually multiplying the length of the rectangle by the breadth. Therefore, the area under a velocity versus time graph gives us the displacement at a certain time. Let's check this against the table again. The position at 2 seconds, which is 0,7 meters, minus the original position of 0,2 meters, shows us that the displacement at 2 seconds is 0,5 meters. So we have seen that we can use the velocity versus time graph to calculate the displacement at a point in time. Finally, we need to discuss the acceleration versus time graph. Since the velocity is constant, acceleration is zero. So, our acceleration versus time graph for constant velocity is the horizontal line through zero. In this lesson, we learnt about constant velocity, how the data can be represented graphically, and how these graphs can be used to do various calculations. To summarize, look at these three graphs of constant velocity. The displacement versus time graph is always a straight line, and the gradient gives us the velocity. The velocity versus time graph is a straight horizontal line, and the area under the velocity time graph gives us the displacement. Finally, acceleration is zero. Grade 10s, you'll find more information about graphs of motion at www.mindset.co.za. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. Bye-bye.